Hello, folks, and welcome to this. Hello, folks, and welcome to this evening broadcast, an examination of Jägermeister. My hair is wild, but it's clean. I just washed it. Washed it. So wouldn't you like to see clean hair? Now, um, we are joined by John and Neely, and Neely from Georgia. I am also, he is in the state of Georgia, and I am in America as well, in Louisiana. And we have Jägermeister. It's been on the market for 83 years, since 1935. Now, the company is saying since 1878. They might have made other products, but the most famous one is this. It uses 56 botanicals, cold macerated essence refined in oak. Okay, it's from a small town in Germany, in Lower Saxony. Best served ice cold, drink responsibly. Well, I don't know how many people do that. We we had a lot of, I got a lot of comments, people saying, uh, oh, this is like the college party crazy man drink, or crazy kids drink, but uh, that's not what it's created for. It's created as a tonic, right? Okay, hello, we have Robert from Kansas, the Whiskey Scout, but no whiskey tonight. <laughs> not tonight. Hey, Robert. Hey, can you hear me fine? Yes. It's coming through on my other camera, and I can't figure out how to get that so it works right. Hmm. For some reason. But anyway, this works. Sorry. Uh, uh, first, John and Neely, what are your comments and experiences with Jägermeister? You saw that I just drank it two, about two or three nights ago and did a review, so my experience is this. Right. Uh, my experience be a little bit more than what you've had. You know, I did work in a bar for six years, and that is one of the most popular drinks uh, in the bar setting, especially mixed with other products like Red Bull. A Red Bull and Jaeger, uh, or a Jaeger bomb, like, a, you know, drop a shot of Jaeger into a beer. Uh, so I've seen it in all kinds of configurations. I have had it. Before, I haven't mixed it with anything. I just usually shoot it or used to. And from what I recall, it was pretty enjoyable. It's definitely a unique spirit. But it's been probably eight or nine years since I've had it. Yeah. I have an aunt from marriage named Undina Jost, and she's from Schleswig-Holstein in Germany. And she said, I said, you ever heard of Jägermeister? Oh, she said, oh, that's the medicinal. And so she kept saying medicinal. She was at, my hair is wild. We were at a Volksfest at Deutsch's house Saturday night. And she was telling me about that. And my uncle said, oh, yeah, I know about that. And I was talking about the party aspect. And he said, oh, well, you know, uh, we used to do that back when they, he went to Tulane University and maybe in high school or whatever. But uh, Robert, what about your experience, the Whiskey Scout? I've... <laughs> I was stationed over in Germany, and Jägermeister was something my first sergeant used to carry in his lower BDU pocket, the exact same bottle almost, size-wise. I think it was a little different shape, maybe, just a little bit, but that was on the German market as well. But I had tried it a couple of times, and I'm just not fond of cough syrup, and back then it reminded me so heavily of cough syrup. I just wasn't my thing. It just really wasn't. But... And now I say that, and I don't care for black licorice, but we would drink ouzo by the stupid bottle and get stupid sick on it. Ah, ouzo, yeah. 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 Oh, uh, and I got a, I found this at a little, oh, uh, little dollar store or whatever, uh, antique mall. And it's a Jägermeister shot glass. So I thought that would be fine. I paid 75 cents for that and 50 cents for this. And it ain't never even been open. So I thought, that's cute memorabilia. <laughs> that's neat. So that's anyway. Really neat. Um, well, John and Neil, I think you're getting some echo issues. But we'll see. Try to mute it. Let's see. Yeah, it had to be on your end because I'm not hearing it now. Um, I always heard that about the cough syrup, you know. Uh, but I did the review, I don't know if any of y'all watched it, but I did the review and uh, I believe John and Neely did. 
and to me it tasted like oh it's coming on your end robert you might have your volume too high um because then it'll start feeding back into it. is it on this yeah well, which one's it coming across on i'm scared to mess with stuff now let me yeah let me turn the volume down see if that helps but my feeling was that it tasted like um gingerbread man i said whoa but it's 56 herbs and spices and botanicals. And they said on the website, I was looking at that, they said you'll taste five different categories. And they were talking about sweet, um, sour, I can't remember. They, it's four different. Still so, doing it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and give, it's red more than, it's reddish brown, is it not? Yes, yeah. It's Almost a uh, Coca-Cola color. Yeah, that's a good description of it. Yeah, that's pretty much, that's what I'm getting. Coca-Cola, flat Coke. Yeah. Oh, good. I didn't think of that. What about the aroma, guys? For me, I smell the oranges up front. Oranges, orange peel marmalade. Yeah, I smell orange. Uh, I, this is cold out of the freezer. I'm trying it cold this time. I did it yesterday, and yesterday I got on the nose medicinal, of course, and I got orange up front, which I get now. Then I get the anise and the black licorice, which kind of play each other. They're basically the same flavor profile. And then I get the ginger, and I get rosemary. Hmm. For some reason, I get rosemary. And I use rosemary a lot when I cook chickens. And when I go to international market, this smells like that store. Oh, wow. In other words, that store is so full of spices from mainly India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan. This. When I first smelled it, I said, it's reminding me of something. I couldn't put my finger on it, but now I know it smells like international market. So if you go to international market, it smells like this. It is bizarre. Can you hear me now? I can hear you fine all along. It's just there's an echo cropping in. Yeah, I unplugged my big snowball speaker, so we'll see how that works. Okay, now I got to taste it. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Woo! There is black licorice, I have to admit. Mine warm, you know, just this little time setting out, it warms. You know, you go to the bar rooms, they have those coolers. I would never do a Jaeger bomb with that Red Bull. I, I don't like those kind of energy drinks. I can't stand feeling jittery. Coffee is my energy drink. And I would just drink this straight. I would never dream of doing those mixes. No way, no how. But I think you could use this in some kind of bakery, like baking items, perhaps. I think there's a law about liqueurs can only be 70 proof, right? No. Oh. No. Because they're always, uh, always 70 proof. Dram Bowie here is a liqueur, a Scottish liqueur. Yeah. And that's 40 40 percent. So oh, okay. Okay. Oh. I just noticed that almost all of them are invariably 70 proof. Um that just might be the preferred proof. Yeah. Well, they call this a digestive for like an after dinner, and I could see that. You know? Yeah. I could see things like that. I have had cough medicine in my life. Fix 40, Formula 44D. I think back in my childhood, didn't they used to put codeine and all that stuff? <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know, this doesn't really, to me, it doesn't really taste like that. I found that the Vicks Formula 44D, to me, that tasted more like the the, the, the Kiafa. I don't know if y'all ever had Kiafa from Finland. That'd be, I have not. that's an interesting one. It's K-I-J-A-F-A. But um, I just, I'm not gonna go on and on. I just find it has like, it's, like a little dance across your tongue. It's like all the 56 running together, like. Yeah, yeah. very savory too. In one aspect, it, the herbalness brings a savory note to it. Yeah. yeah. 
I think it's a lot more licorice on the nose, and then when you drink it, a little it's a little sweeter. And maybe I think you mentioned maybe in your solo video the cinnamon starts to come through a little bit more yeah. on the palate. Um, it is. I do have mine chilled a little bit. It is kind of syrupy, uh, but it really it doesn't linger as badly as I thought it would. I thought it was going to stick around and and just hang hang around on the inside of my cheeks but it's it's actually if i'm being honest it's actually better than i remember it um from when i last had it which has been quite a while like i said before so it's actually a little bit better than i remember yeah mine was in the freezer for days so it was as cold as it's gonna get covered with frost you know uh oh i'm trying to think about this thing this is not the kind of drink that I would make a habit of buying. And like even John and Ely said, I think it was you said, this catched me off guard. Like I didn't expect you to review something like that. I, yeah. had, I hadn't made a big plan to do it, but I just kept seeing it, you know? And I said, golly, you hear about this thing every day of your life. So I was at Winn-Dixie. I mean, there wasn't a good deal. It was $4.99 for that 100 milliliter bottle. That's probably a rip off. But I said, uh, I don't want to pay nineteen ninety nine for the big bottle because what if I hate it, you know? So I paid the service charge for the convenience, right? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> but it worked out. Um, now I wish I'd have bought the uh, dang nineteen ninety nine bottle, but I'm not going to go revisit it because there's so many liqueurs and just Sazerac, that one company, they must have three hundred liqueurs. I mean, if you look on their website, it's mad. You know, like you say, oh, that's not three hundred; that's only seventy. Yeah, but if you click each liqueur, there's like 10, 12 variants of each one of those. Oh, it, wow. just, it just, it's un, unbelievable. I don't know how they can, but they have it. It's crazy. But don't, <clears throat> I go over my palate real quick, and I'm going to use my notes a little bit on this, because my notes differ. I said, it's gotten colder. Yes. Some things changed a little bit. But uh, on the palate, what I got was black licorice. I still get the orange. I get anise and ginger. It's slightly salty. I do get your cinnamon. And then I get a little sweet basil. Uh, Just a little bit of sweet basil. Right. Right. Like that that that, that um, NOLA Brewing Company's lemon basil ale. It, it, it kind of reminds me of that now that you mention it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some of that orange is coming through a little bit now, too, I'm picking up. And that's an interesting note, Robert, the basil. Now that I think about it, that I can definitely see how basil would, yeah. Basil's, at, and it, like the rosemary, is about the only two herbs I can sit here and go, I really get that in this. Yeah, it really makes sense. I'm not calling cinnamon a herb. Herbs are, cinnamon's more of a spice, of course. Right. But uh, those are the two things that really stand out to me herbal-wise that I can get out of this. I think vanilla bean probably is used there, Madagascar vanilla bean. Well, they also let that say they let it set in oak barrels for a year. Yes. So it's going to get some of the vanillins out of the oak barrels too, I'm sure. I don't know if they're pre-used oak barrels. They don't go into detail. It no. just... Set up barrels. They have over 400 in their cellar. They said that um, their recipe is secret, so you're never going to really find out. You can sit there on the internet and do a video and try to guess all day, but you're never going to know. Right. Um, I'm going to read comments, but before we go to that, I want to kind of wrap it up. Um, I don't want to be on here too long because uh, people have things to do. And uh, to me, most of the comments I got from people were positive, like, oh, yes, I know about this sort of a legendary drink. It's iconic type thing. And I agree with that. But then a few comments were negative, like, oh, that's horrible stuff. You know, it's the worst and all this. And I said, no, but then a lot of times they brought in the way they were drinking. It probably lent itself to their perception of it being so bad. Because they weren't sipping out of a little thimble glass like this. Right. They were at the college campus and not necessarily 
doing it in a responsible manner, if you get my drift. Yeah, this one would probably uh, cause a pretty nasty hangover, I would imagine. So. Oh, it's loaded with all types of sugar, I'm sure. It is not. Right. It, and if you get on the website, they don't, it's not promoted. I mean, it's promoted as a drink, nightlife, and all of that. Okay. Beautiful women and clubs and everything. Okay. I mean, you know, obviously they're trying to sell it. But it is not promoted as people passing out, drinking, crawling across the parking lot in broken glass and passing out and laying in the dew. You know, waking up or covered with dew and hair messed up and not knowing why they got there at uh, the community college where they were. You know, so it's not, that is not what they're promoting it for. They would, they're not saying you should do that. They know people do. They can't control what happens once it's purchased. Right. Fortunately, this is a widespread use for it. And I think younger people, they like that. I used to like that more when I was young, that sweet, 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 you know. And so it, you can see how soft drink, you know, the 20 year olds that like Coca-Cola, like Dr. Pepper, like bitter honey, like eating all the sweets, they're going to like that kind of thing. But good grief. Can you imagine how bad it would make you feel? You abuse it. Oh yeah. But a little thimble glass like this once a night, I can't see a problem with it. it no. It, I, it's not I, just, I, yeah. I'm sorry. And like Robert said, it's uh, it, it's supposed to be a good you know aperitif, uh, so like an after meal drink that helps the digestive system because I guess of all the botanicals and the you know herbs and spices and all of that that they put in there. Yeah, it remind. I'll say one more thing, then I'm gonna read the comments. It reminds me of a product that comes out of England or Scotland. I can't remember. I think both. There's an Abbey. It's called Buckfast Abbey. Okay. The monks there been producing this what they call tonic wine since the 1920s. It's called Buckfast wine. It's a tonic wine, probably designed to drink if you're having a little trouble uh, with bowel processes. Let's not get too detailed. Dige digestive tract issues, let's call it. Similar to Metamucil, but with alcohol. All right. You know, buy it, drink this much, fine. And uh, they started sourcing it out to this bigger company that could produce a lot more of it at one time, according to their recipe. Now, apparently in Scotland, it's a huge bum drink. People buy this tonic wine, drink half the bottle, and they find them, like I said, passed out in the park. They don't know where they were, and there's all kind of social problems with it, family problems. But the monks at the Abbey, they are, they're insistent. They say, we are not producing this product for that purpose. We cannot control people buying it and abusing it. So I have to, I tend to side with the monks, you know, if you look at their website, it's nothing about, you know, woohoo, buck fast, get bent, you know, there's nothing about that on there. I don't know what y'all think about that. It's just, that's my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I've never had buck fast, it's not sold in the United States, but I know over there in England, the United Kingdom, it's like, oh, if you bring that up. <laughs> Pandora's box, you know. <laughs> Y'all want to see what the comments say? Yeah. And then we can talk about if we would buy it again in our final assessment, and that'll be enough, I guess. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Got a lot of viewers. Okay. Gabe says, hi, I'm here watching. Hello, Gabe. Maxwell, you're up this late, Maxwell? <laughs> he said, hello, Ron, and hello, all. Glad to see you. I thank you for the stream. Now, I'm drinking Bud Beer. Nice taste. Yeah, see, in Russia, it's got to be sold as Bud, not Budweiser. That's legal issues. He said, very nice beer, I think. Very light, 5% alcohol, but uh, but drinking is so light. Maybe with bread, a bread smell, a white bread smell, sorry. But the cap of the beer quickly disappears. Well, you basically describe Budweiser because that's, basically, that's essentially what happens. The head goes right away. <laughs> so uh, good. Maxwell, you should start a video channel if you can do such a good job describing what you're drinking. Maxwell, you ever had um, Jägermeister? You're curious to know that. Ah, so my final comment, I like it. I wouldn't make a habit of drinking it because I don't really 
drink these types of things. But I know that if you go to a liquor store, there's a whole shelf full of liqueurs, like this huge selection. So apparently somebody's drinking these type of items. And this is one of the kings of that that um, area. So I'm all favorable for it. I mean, I'm 100% favorable towards it, I have to admit. That's just my opinion. That's it. I'm done. Go ahead, John. Um, I'll say this. It was nice to revisit. Kind of brings back some memories, I guess, of, of trying it out when I was younger. But this is not something I would probably buy again anytime soon. Uh, it is a well-made product, and I see why a lot of people enjoy it. Um, but, yeah, it's just really not my thing. Uh, I do think it is put together well, though, and I, I honestly, before tonight, I didn't realize that they used 50 di uh, 56 different um, ingredients to bring this thing together. So I think they did a good job because when you start getting into that many different things, you can overdo it or it could be kind of off. But with this, I think it's very well balanced. And I, I would recommend it for anybody that, that likes liqueurs. I think it's a very well-made liqueur. Okay, that sounds like a fair assessment. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you. Man, I don't know why I got so much feedback. Uh, We're not hearing it. We're not hearing it. Okay, good. Uh, I agree with John in a lot of ways. Uh, when you had mentioned it, I had not had it since 1986. I wouldn't even drink it my last year in the service in 87. <laughs> I just was not my thing. And so it's a lot different than I expected. I do like some liqueurs, like Drambuie. I used to make rusty nails out of them, but now I buy it because I just I like the flavor of it. I mean, I think it's pretty good stuff. It's not something you sit and drink. It's something you drink like you do this, a little ounce or two once in a while. And that's all it's really meant for. So you can get by with the 375 last year, six months, you yeah. know. So would I buy this again? No, I like Drambuie better. But I got a friend that says the stuff from Czechoslovakia. We got a large Czech population, and it's called Becherovka. It's a Czech liqueur, and he says it's better than Jägermeister. It's not as sweet, and so I'm going to have to get around to give it a try. Uh, but no, nah, it's, it's for a 100-mil bottle. Yeah, it's okay once in a while. Great while. <laughs> Is that the similar price over there? About four ninety nine for that size. I think that's for exactly what I paid. Maybe four sixty nine was maybe it's same price. I mean, I don't exactly remember, but it wasn't very much. Yeah, it was on sale. I actually got two of these little. I guess it's a hundred milliliter bottles for um, six dollars. Two for six. Whoa, that's a good deal. Yeah. That's a great deal. A lot of these places around here have the little whiskey bottles, like Benchmark and such, for $1.39. I wish I could get more of those smaller bottles, but uh, Jägermeister is just so popular. It's one of the few that I can actually find in a small bottle. Usually, <laughs> in my area, it's either the one liter bottle or the just the huge 1.75 liter behemoth and a lot of times i don't i don't want to buy that much of anything really so no no i guess you could Especially this right i guess you can right. you can marinate meat with it but that'd be a dang expensive marinade uh, i don't think i would pay that much for um oh well i think we examined it pretty fairly yeah, we do have something coming up in about two weeks, something like that. What is it, June second? I think. And I don't know if Robert can join us because everybody's got busy schedules. But we do have Canadian Limited coming up. That's been on the market since 1972. It used to be more prominent in the sense that you would see magazine ads for it like 45 years ago. You don't see that today. You don't see any, well, you might see point of sale. You might go to a liquor store and see some you know, little signs that hang up. Uh, they did redo the label about 
two years ago, but you'll find many, many bottles with the old label still hanging around. It's wildly popular here. That might mean that we have bad taste. I don't know, but it's wildly <laughs> popular here. I see it just people buy it by the truckloads of those big bottles, you know, and it's Canadian limited. Okay. June 4th. I wanted to check. That's right. June 4th at seven o'clock Eastern time. I've never had it. I'm not expecting much. But why would I if I paid seven dollars and forty nine cents a bottle? <laughs> I mean, it's uh, you know it, it exists. People ask me sometimes, why do you even examine these things? I said they exist. <laughs> yeah, they, that's fun to do. What I mean, you know, enjoy. It's the spice of life trying different things. I mean, you ain't hurting yourself. You just enjoying it. Right, and I don't make any kind of great, like, I mean, I know, I, I know, I do these cheap blended whiskeys, and people probably roll their eyes and say, "Oh my goodness, Kentucky Gold, what are you talking about?" Like I did a video this morning, sitting out there in the front yard. Well, I know that when I, before I do the video, I have enough sense to know what I'm dealing with, obviously. But it's funny that people make comments like, "I don't know what I'm dealing with." And I'm playing it straight. You know, when I do the videos, I'm playing it straight. Like, oh, today we're going to look at Kentucky Gold. And so the perception might be that I'm not aware of what I'm dealing with. I'm quite aware. If I reviewed a Godzilla movie, I would be aware of what I was dealing with. You know what I'm saying? But I can still play it straight. But I would not be under any illusions. I don't know if that's making sense to you, but I think you know what I'm saying. No, I fully understand what you're saying. I agree with you. I, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily how good it is. It's the perception that people have of whether the price value makes it good or bad. A lot of times that plays into it, but and in truth, sometimes the price value does decide. That Bourbon Supreme stuff is not good. <laughs> I do not like it. <laughs> I, mean, I cannot put it more simply than that. Or no, it's Kentucky gentlemen. Do not. Oh, like yeah. It. <laughs> That's no, no. <laughs> I I tried. I I drank that whole half a pint except for probably the last little bit. I just couldn't. I couldn't do no more. <laughs> I was done. <laughs> so I have to admit, it really was the worst of the blended bourbons. Yeah. That thing was just. Mm. It was hard. It was very hard. <laughs> you'd have to really be a John might want to hit that. You'd have to be a dedicated alcoholic to, to drink that Kentucky gentleman. But I know people that are. Now, uh, yeah. now I knew one guy. It was a terrible tragedy. He drank himself to death. Died at forty nine years old. Now, Robert, you might want. Let's see what happens. It'll solve that problem. We're gonna get off anyway, man. Yeah, that was it. It was starting to feedback. So it was a tragedy, you know, a tragedy like so terrible, you know, a nightmare. A, a, a friend of mine used to go to games with me and everything, calling me, let's go to this game. You know, but I mean, it was just like this kind of nightmare. Like you don't know why these people do this, just drinking, literally. And this sounds like an exaggeration, but I can swear, I promise you, it is not a fifth of crown royal a day and he just died at 49. i said that i said to somebody else said he'll never make it to 50. sure enough he did not so that was a disaster but you know he at least drank crown royal he wasn't going berserk with a bottle of like you're saying kentucky gentleman i mean that's it doesn't matter because he was the intake was 80 percent alcohol every day is like horrible but i'm saying i was just thinking about that said even with that horrible situation he would still say i'm going to drink crown i'm going to drink something credible you know even though what he was doing was incredible or non-credible so um but i'm afraid that a lot of these cheap things like kentucky dale and uh kentucky gentlemen and uh T.W. Samuels and Heaven Hill, Kentucky blended. That's a lot of people that are just drinking their life away or something. You know what I mean? They're just pounding that stuff every day and 
getting the little plastic bottles. You know what they're doing with it. The, I call those take to work bottles. Just sneaking in there and they're drinking that damn stuff, you know. But anyway, um, you can't control what other people do. But that's another topic. Anyway, uh, any final thoughts? I'm finished. I mean, we did Jägermeister. It exists. And I was very excited to do it. Final word. One of the better liqueurs out there, if that's your thing, I think you'd probably really enjoy it. Um, I wouldn't recommend mixing it with Red Bull because you get a that, – that could be dangerous. But uh, as a sipper, I think it's it's pretty enjoyable. I agree with John. I think that's about the nature of what it's supposed to be, and I wouldn't push it beyond that. Okay, two – uh, and I, I think we're all in agreement. Tyler says, uh, can't say Jägermeister without Red Bull. Have not had it for years. Well, I can say it without Red Bull because I would never do it. No way, Tyler. No way, no how. Uh, Jacob Miller says, I would be very pleased to start the beer hangouts again. <laughs> you pick the night. Well, Jake, let me tell you this, Jacob. I don't do the beer hangouts anymore because that fell, you know, it just died out. We did so much of it. Like people got sick of it. All right. But on the other hand, some people picked up the torch, kind of like a relay race. So you've got Tyler who d does it. And then you got Eric Fraunfelter. They do it very often. They're always doing it once or twice a week, both of them. Now they might get tired of it after a while too, but they're always doing it. So Tyler, I mean, Jacob, Jacob's the guy that did the, the ham's ice. You know, he took the, the paper and he taped it to the can. He said, I got ham's ice tonight. No such product exists. It was funny. <laughs> but you got to contact Eric and uh, Tyler and see if, because as far as I'm concerned, you're invited at all times. You have an open invitation and you always brought in some good points. So I would say that the, that the beer hangouts are still ongoing. They're doing a Kona Wednesday night. They're doing dry hop beers uh friday next week they got green lit, green bottle beers beers that come in green bottles and then it goes on and on they always come up with new topics so i would say yeah you come on and join i can't always do it like i can't find kona this week i may not find it but yeah jacob yeah i can't speak for other people's channel i'm just kind of like inviting you to their party but i know they won't mind that's it so i appreciate John and Nelly and uh, the Beer Scout joining us for something that was nothing to do with beer or the, wi the whiskey scout. <laughs> I mean the whiskey scout. Well, <laughs> I, could I, mean, blame, I could blame the Jägermeister, but I had a, like one ounce, so I just maybe I, oh I woke up too early. The whiskey scout. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's good. The Whiskey Scout, people. The Whiskey Scout. It's on YouTube. Look it up. The Whiskey Scout. And look up John and Nilly. He's got his own channel. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks, for watching this video production.